You are still set upon this game. My Lord Rochester has determined upon an uprising, and he is the King's Field Marshal General in England. Where is Lord Rochester? Near enough, sir. I must talk some sense into his head. It is too late, and I am forbid to bring anyone to him. I pray you sit down, sir. If you will listen quietly. Sit I down, will... listen quietly in my own house. Thank you. I asked no questions. I think I should have done. Forgive me, old friend. It is time now to bring you fully into our confidence. To have done so earlier would have been too dangerous. Oh, yes. Believe me, Nanko, I've planned it carefully. We must start with a bold success. That means seizing a strong base. Your strong base being Arnscote. Sir Austin, I have been to Arnscote. It is lightly guarded and very well placed. It is ours for the taking. Then we march south, picking up recruits as we go, and we seize the port of Lyme. Once that is secured, His Majesty will land with a good support of troops and money. That'll put fire into the waverers. Still smoulders, but it will flare up and sweep the land. If His Majesty comes. Lord Rochester gives his word upon that. And then all England will rise up, eh? When the King is among them, yes. He was short memory, my Lord. He was beat at Worcester. No one rose up then. <laughs> this is a young man's fantasy. Why have you just brought us a shipload of arms, sir? If you are all doubt. Because I'm an old fool. Damnation have it, this fellow here often enough, and let his friends come and go. But if my part were known in the King's escape after Worcester, I'd surely lose my head. <laughs> 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 well, I've only one to lose, devil take it. I'm sick of seeing Warty Noll Cromwell, our Lord Protector, living in the King's Palace, coming to Parliament in a kingly carriage, sitting there on a throne. He means to be King, and sooner the one born than the upstart self-crowned. Bravo! <laughs> it's not just you young ones who can cry a fig upon common sense and join a forlorn hope. <laughs> well... God save the king. God, God save, save the, the king. king. And may he be worth it. <laughs> I shall advise those who lack arms that they can equip here. Thank you, Sir Austin. Mr. Snevel. Mr. Snevel, there's one threat you've left out of your reckoning. What threat? The intelligence are in Whitehall, Mr. Thurlow. We have moved too fast for him, Sir Austin. Mistress Neville. God be with you, Francis. And with you, Tom. A remarkable lady. Aye. Her husband fell at Newark. Aye, he was my friend. And she is a brave messenger. <laughs> Edward, leave at once. Bring in the storming party. Storming party? What's this? It's not all fantasy, Nuncle. We must take Arnscot swiftly and intact. Not far off is a storming party formed by Edward. And I will attack, sir, knowing that my own wife is within those walls. Aye. And maybe the rest of the family, too. Oh, mischief, I say. I'm informed. Not yet sufficiently, but there is mischief afoot. Well, then, with our agents at the heart of their cabals, it uh, matters not. We will hear. Rochester has others to command. He's a desperate man who sees victory in a wine cup. 
We must stop him, John. A fool may start a fire in a powder storm. Oh, I've, uh, I've sent for someone. You should be outside. Mr. Fletcher. Sir? Colonel Leckie, forgive me for having kept you waiting. Greater part of a soldier's business, sir. Waiting. <laughs> oh, you and Mr. Fletcher are long acquainted. Indeed we are. Good. I was told Minty was sick. Yes, she's off her crew today. Minty? Oh, 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 bless you, my dear. What's amiss with you, Minty? Uh, old age. Old age. Well, you must eat something. I took a morsel, but tis me own potion that keeps the breath in me. Will you give me a drop, mistress? Yes. She's always a little fool like an hungry old vixen. <laughs> She must be poorly. Oh. Well, I hope it tastes better than it smells. Thank you. She be gone. Yes. I knew she was going out because they'd be cutting up a sheep for her. Was I sent to you, Mistress Lucinda. I must talk to you. What is it that you could not say in front of Mrs. Dumfrey? It is secret. What is this secret? Minty can see what others can't see. Oh, we know you're a mighty witch. What do you see? I see you are three months gone with child. Oh, my love. I held the newborn in my arms, and I must warn you, no one will take you for a faithless wife. They'll know your man is near. And at Sir Austin's house, say, where you go so oft, well, he is in danger. I see... You do not see. Minty, this is not your affair. There is more at hazard than an unborn babe. brings you to these parts? Business. Of course. Mistress Fletcher, I apologize for our intrusion. We shall be away in a few hours. Well, what is your business here? Our business? Tis military. We came but to reinforce the garrison. We shall not incommode you, ma'am. Why do we need more soldiers? What is happening? sake is blood to be shed again we shed blood to save blood ma'am we have the scent of a quarry the Lord grant we find it mistress No trouble on the way? None. Three troops will come here tonight to be armed. We're ready. I've been to Lord Ferrer. He is ready. Then the fuse is lit. 
for tomorrow. God be with us. Amen. When does Edward move? Upon your final word. I'll take it to him now. I'll journey between the two of you to see that naught goes awry. Good. And his route? He has his route and time's worked out. I'll give them to you. Country air and some sport, Tom, and my girl's cheeks were somewhat too pale for my liking. <laughs> I'm not given to painting them. <laughs> but our country air will paint them for you. And you, you old rogue, have got sport enough for you. Okay, stop it! <laughs> Bespeak a room for my guests and a woman. What? To wait upon my lady. <laughs> I cannot stay. I've been gathering. Intelligence. I'm on my way with it to Lord Rochester, but I wish to bring my girl here for some shelter. She is always welcome. Look after her, Tom. I would not have my little woman in danger. Oh, your little woman is not afraid if there is danger. You must do as I say, my love. Go off to the man and rest in your chamber. Oh, my commander dismisses me. I must obey. I have travelled the counties for Rochester. There are armed men gathered in all essential parts. Be confident. Strike now. They will come out when you fire the signal. Well, we have 300 in the county. That's enough for a start. Have you arms enough? <laughs> we have an armory. I'll show it to you. Sir Austin's down there now. Can we trust him? You will see. I wish to. The most important thing, Tom, I must take to Rochester. When is it to be? <laughs> it's tomorrow. Tomorrow? Then I must ride swiftly. But first, I'll see the armory. Good. Come. Now, you must tell Rochester it all hangs on Edward Ferrer. Ferrer. Here, Minty. Oh, tis the racking of the joints. Drink this. Thank you. You mixed as I told you. I did. It will help you sleep. I... I sleep now. Bless you. Oh, tis time you will see your bed. Yes. Oh. your service will suffer if I am exposed. Oh, I see some wine. 
This work makes the mouth dry. Wet it. And come to your point. They have 300 men in this camp. We know that and we Colonel Winter, you want to bring us their plan. And have done so. There's a... The sunrise tomorrow. The nub is a storm of Arnscott. Ferrar is bringing a troop of trained men for the assault. He should be on the old Drover's track sometime uh, around about uh, dawn, I reckon. At what point do you know? Ferrar has 40 men afoot and himself and three officers a horse. Is below a height they call um, yeah, Shepherd's Hill. I know Shepherd's Hill, Colonel. Well, Pharaoh's your man. Without him, their design is dead. Mr. Fletcher, and you three men, come with me. Sir Austin, the game is done. Yes. We have just arrested Sir Thomas Lacey. Here, in this house. And we know of the arms in your cellar. Mr. Fletcher. I must see the house searched, then be away to finish the business. Do your duty. Oh, Mr. Fletcher, I shall leave you an armed escort to London. Keep going. Well, Mr. Fletcher, do your duty. You were bidden to arrest me by Mr. Thurlow, no doubt. He has a nice sense of humour and no great love for me. Well, am I to be in chains? Come, man, don't look so chopfallen. Do your duty. Father, do not talk of fetters. I am to convey you to London at once and with all consideration. Oh, oh, oh. with all consideration. Oh, that's handsome. And to what place in London? My house. That'd be a kind service. You know it is the Tower. Now, that is an honour. 
The Tower of London. Hmm. Your father's a man of consequence. You knew well what you were risking when you went into this plot. You who were once for Parliament. What it is to have a loving son. Your man Joshua may come. Tell him to pack your necessaries. We start at once. You may start. I stay. I'm here for the Commonwealth and require your compliance, sir. I'll comply with naught so long as your wife's sister lies ill under my roof. Well, I've sent for Anne. It was the least you could have done. And the least I can do is to see Lucinda out of danger. Till then, I'll not leave my house. Not alive. Very well. I can bide here till noon. We're not barbarians. <laughs> barbarians. We must warn Edward.
A general, no less. Sir, I trust myself to your honor. Lord, have mercy on me. This is hard. Jack. We must get off before they send men for a burial. In a pit. Others we loved rot in the common pit. There'll be a time for monuments. Which way do we ride? Different ways, Tom. You must use your wits to take you to Cologne. I must find Rochester and conduct him out of the country. My dear, allow me to present to you Major General Horton. Your servant, ma'am. I should be dull if I did not know names so honoured on the battlefield. And in the councils of government, my dear. You do me too much honour, ma'am. And Mr. Fletcher, I have but served God as I could. What brings you here, sir? I am appointed Major General in command of these counties. It was my task to end this mischief. I have come here into a nightmare. What has happened? A party of rebels led by Lord Fedder has been intercepted upon its way to storm Arnscott. Arnscott? Fear not, Mistress Fletcher. This plague boil has been lanced. Then what has become of Lord Ferrer? Slain, madam. Dear God. Lucinda. My sister lies ill, sir. I know. A sad business. Walter Jackman, what has happened to him? Where is he? He was with them. None escaped, ma'am. I let none live. Dear Lord in heaven, I too. Madam, compassion is to be honoured in a lady. But a godly lady must steal her heart and be glad. For Mr. Thurlow, with the aid of your good husband, has most cunningly lured these rascals from their lairs, and I have crushed them. My husband helped to contrive this thing. They permitted it to come about, let us say. It is written, Saul has slain his thousands, David his tens of thousands. There will be no more cavalier risings. Uh, the Lord Protector is sick of dissensions and unrest. He's been inclined towards a military rule. And this day's work has decided it. Within a month, the Major Generals will rule in every division of this land. Parliament is useless, ma'am. It may meet, but the soldiers will command. Come, Mr. Fletcher. Madam. I am grieved that our conversation has been so brief. It must be. Au revoir. What are you waiting for? Tears? I mourn with you. Do, Lucinda, I loved Edward. He was an enemy to you. I bet it dead if you were honest. 
Through you, he was my brother. Let us end this estrangement, be sisters again. Drive tears. There go his killers, your champions. In time, when you are over this. I slipped a pup, that's all. The bleeding staunched. I'm over it. Save your strength. We shall go back to Arnskut today. Go yourself, leave me. Dearest, this house will soon be empty. Do what you will with me. The very places I used to love are hateful. I've got to be away from you all. I've ordered the coach for you. I shall engage another at Swinford. I shall take Hannah back to Arnsket to be my housekeeper. It may ease her grief a little. You should have consulted me first. We have long managed our matters separately. <laughs> my matters are my own. Yours are for me to decide. As you are no longer there, matters at Arnskut are now in my hands. As to yours, I thank God they are your own. I would not have them on my conscience. You know nothing of the necessities of state. I know you were party to this trap. I know it was a pretext for putting a sword government upon this nation that fought to have a sovereign parliament. That's what I know. Govern your house, woman! I mean, we're not meant to look further. You'll have duties enough. Major General Horton has accepted my kind invitation to establish his headquarters at Arnscott. His headquarters? For the ruling of this county's woman. Was a great man. We're honoured. Do not feel obliged to come to Arnscott. I am sure you are fully occupied in London with your necessities of state. My love. Are we safe? My dear girl. No one but Lecky and Fletcher saw me at Arnscott. And now I am here to rescue my love. I was kept in here. Where else? You were under guard like the rest. But Lucinda came, and Anne. How much do they know? Nothing, my love. Believe me, nothing. They came in like frightened hens in a flutter, and now they are gone. Oh. We are safe. God. <laughs> Some wine, my love? No? What? And now it's soft to cologne. And the king 
and a hero's welcome. You'll see. Oh, my love, what a life this is. Tis the best game of hazard I've ever ventured. What's that? That's no servant. It's Tom. This is the best sight I ever saw. Feast your eyes, my honey. The boy is safe. From my lips, Tom, that's the way soldiers drink. I thought to find you here cover your tracks, you had to double back on them. To your vixen. What is this, Tom? Some joke? Some suspicion? A man can think wild things, even of his friends, after what we have been through, Tom. Has some rogue been pouring poison into your ears, Tom? We are friends, Tom. Friends. Let me hear how you came off. And then hear what befell me. To drink first, Tom. Oh, drink and laugh at adversity. Spy, you've been the death of two men that I loved, and so have I, by being your gull. to me. No other man ever was. I suppose you will kill me now. I have no fear. Not even a bad conscience. Only fools fight wars. The rest shift for themselves to stay alive. 
That's all we did. Chacun pour soi. Each for himself. And so we were. Well then, strike! I'll not soil a good blade. You can live and be a penny strumpet in the alleys. He's a murderer better than a whore. Look at yourself. Murderer! Murderer! Get out! Murderer! Out! Is it waiting to know your fate that makes you pale? A week in the Tower of London spoils the complexion, General Cromwell. Your pardon, sir. Protector Cromwell? You must say, my lord, Protector. Oh? Is it not now His Highness, the Lord Protector? I am well, Your Highness. You are well till your head comes off your body. Now, sir, no more frills. You are here to plead against the proven fact that you did supply arms for a rising. The blood shed thereafter is upon your hands. And yours, my Lord Protector. And his. Is this my trial? Am I not to have a proper trial? <laughs> but then you decide. Your judges will fall over each other to please you. I decide upon trial. And then these papers upon you which go back many years, will be the death of you. Yes, sir, Mr. Thurlow, I will say that. Seventy thousand pounds a year on the interception of letters alone, I can well believe it. Make your plea, sir, unless you mean to brazen your way to the block. Oh, I shall make a plea. I plead guilty to what you charge. But, my Lord Protector, I don't brazen now. I speak for England. Will you not plead guilty to your own faults in government? The Lord is my guide. I govern as he directs me. Aye, sir. So do Christian soldiers all, and all fall upon each other? My lord, if I may intrude, this is not to the purpose. You are right, Mr. Thurlow. There is none I despise, Sir Austin Fletcher, so much as a turncoat. You were with us from the start, and now you have turned your coat. I crush such serpents beneath my heel. And is that, sir, why you now decree that all England is to be crushed under the heel of your generals? Mayhap all England is turning its coat. You hear this satanic filth. He condemns himself, my lord. Make your plea for mercy. It is your right, even though it be wasted breath. My plea, sir. I will put my case. Sir, I'm no small fry in the city of London. You're a great man there, but what of that? We have beheaded a king. Aye, you wanted him out of the way. But you'd be in a pretty pickle if I were out of the way. Thousands have perished, you are but one more. Sir. You will find that among my colleagues in the city, it is touch one, touch all. We are your finders of money. You need money. This man brags his life away. Nay, Mr. Thurlow, though you are greedy for my life. Sir, I speak in earnest. All the major generals in the land will not find you the means to govern without money. I can provide it. I and those who will say yea or nay upon my nod. You dare to threaten me? Heaven forbid, sir. I merely recall to you that I can't nod if me head's struck off. My lord, we have other business. Now, sir, what I propose is a treaty. <laughs> this worm talks to me of treaties. I will not hear more. You, you're a dead man. I, I've mischosen my word, sir. I pray you hear my avowal. That is it, sir. An avowal. Sir... My Lord Protector, I repent of my part in that rising. Oh, I... Nay, I speak not to ingratiate myself with you, sir, but to confess, I, to confess, I was a fool. I've had a different rule in this country, do to me what you will, but it won't come by rebellions. It'll come from the people, but not while you live, for you are a great man and born to rule. 
In short, you propose my death. I would myself put a sword into any plotter of your death. I wish for no man's death, least of all my own. Sir, I say to you that while you rule, I shall serve my country by aiding you when I think it right, and by counselling if you will listen. And, sir, I will and can make the City of London serve you. You're a free man. Sir Austin, do you not hear the Lord Protector? Despite grievous fault, he grants you pardon. Oh, I, I heard. I do most heartily thank you, my Lord. I mean that. Great heavens. Men have fallen on their knees and kissed his highness' hand for less than this. Mr. Thurlow, I am not a kisser of hands. Nor other parts. <laughs> that I can well believe. I can well believe it. Hear me now. I will call upon your aid when it suits me. I and also your counsel it may be, so long as you do no further treason. For treason there remains the axe. Mr. Fellow, see Sir Austin out and send him in a carriage to his house. Your Highness. Good fellows, they'll see us safe away. <laughs> 